this video is going to design basically how to design the core of the puzzle. So puzzles have a core usually, and they also have center pieces and center caps, so this is like fine-tuning kind of just to make the mechanics workable. Um, something I forgot to mention in the last video is that SolidWorks is such a big program that it tends to crash a lot. So I do recommend you save very frequently. Uh, it can kind of be frustrating when it crashes on you, so you saved, it's no big deal. Um, Alright, so this is going to be how to design the core. Almost all custom puzzles have a ball core. Ball core cores work well. Um, I use them because almost all puzzle builders will use them too. I use them because they are very stable. Um, not only they're easy to design, which not, that really isn't the most important thing, but they're very stable and they're also, you know, they promote good turning. Uh, it's cheaper to print because you have a big hollow space, which, I mean, printing has changed, so I don't really know anymore. But anyway, the first thing we need to do is to design a ball in the middle. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back in time and design a ball, and then we're going to go forward in time and split the whole thing again. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go right and take this line here and drag it up before split one. So what that does is it undoes the split, but you know, if you can go back in time, it'll split it, but you know, that's not what we're interested in. Right now we want it here. We'll go back later. Um, so all you do is you go to sketch three, you press N for normal. There's normal to sketch three. You click on sketch three, press show sketch three. All right, now on the front plane, which is the plane we drew that sketch on, we're going to press L for line and draw a circle. So the circle is going to start here. And let's have it go about eh, yay far. Um, notice the circle is below this arc here. That's because when we make the circle, we're going to make the circle into a sphere like a spherical surface body, kind of like the surfaces we just made, and split that. So you split the circle out. It's very similar to what we just did. Um, so we need it to be smaller than the mechanism. So it's below all the mechanisms. We're going to save this. All right. Now, you see, we're going to cl click on this sketch. And we want an R for revolve this sketch. Let's revolve it around um, this axis which is the axis we just revolved it around. Um, you can save it. And what that did is that made a sphere in the middle. See, it created this new surface body. Here are the old ones from when we split it. And this is the new surface. And it's just a sphere in the middle. So you, so you press Control shift s um, for select this new surface. Uh, for the selected body, select this cube. Cut bodies should be two, so it's the cube and the sphere. Um, awesome, yay, save that. And now what you want to do is just go down and rebuild this sketch. And what that does, you notice, it doesn't look any different. So you can press isolate this. But you notice there's like a little chunk missing out of there. Right? And that's because that is part of this new sphere. So if we isolate this, notice how short that is. Notice this is missing that too. And there's a sphere in the middle. You just can't see it right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna hide this because it's bothering me. I'm gonna click on sketch three, I'm gonna hide that because it's bothering me. I'm gonna select all three axes, actually hide them. So you can click on something, pan up to hide hide show. Um, so now it's just the cube. Cool. Now there's a bunch of bodies here that are the same. Like, there's eight corners. I only want one corner, right? Because we're going to do a little maintenance on them. We're not going to do it to all eight. I'm only going to do it to one. So you, what you do is you press X for delete. You're Xing it out. And you click on all of the pieces except for the ones you want. So here I have one center, one edge, and one corner. Select them all. Go over here. And that's everything. So edge, corner, center. Those are all the pieces. And you see the ball there in the middle. That's our sphere. Make sure you hide this surface. Please. 
All right. Awesome. Now you can do a little adjustments. Um, if you look, this is really thick here, which, I mean, I guess you could change. So I'll go back to the master sketch here. I'm going to click on the sketch, edit sketch. I'm just going to do a little fine tuning. You don't really need to do this, but that matter I will and look how that changed it. Save that, it rebuilds everything for you. It's awesome. Great feature. Um, so now what we're going to do is we are going to take the center and design a center cap and we're going to design a screw hole. Uh, when we 3D print puzzles and we build them, we're going to put screws through the centers. Um, typically I'll use uh, M3, or sorry, 3M screws. So 3 millimeter screws you can get them on Amazon. If not, I mean, there are Americanized versions of it, like size 6 or something from Home Depot. It's what I use sometimes, but there's a bunch of different screw sizes. I'm just going to design this based on 3M screws. Uh, if you do build puzzles, I do recommend using 3M screws. Um, for the most part, we really won't be using springs. Most of the time, fitting a spring is pretty difficult. Um, if you can, great. Uh, it's pretty easy to figure out how to fit a spring, but I mean, you don't need a spring. Um, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to isolate the center. So you click the center, press I, and here it is. There's the center. Uh, what we want to do is kind of split it along this here to make a center cap. So what I do is I click on this face and I press P. Sorry, just press P for plane. P will make a plane. So you do is click on this flip face, and what it does is when you click on a face, it'll make a plane parallel to that face, but it'll offset it. Um, so see how it's not on this face, but it's 10 millimeters up. That's actually pretty nice. What we're going to do is flip offset and make that like 2 millimeters. You can really have a center cap that's even generously thick for a center cap. Uh, you could even go like 1, but let's just make it 2. We'll make it 2. So press Enter check, whatever. Uh, and see this plane here. Now, earlier we split along a surface body, but you can also split along the plane. So we're going to click the plane, we're going to control shift s um, The plane is selected for trim tools. You can use a lot of different things for trim tools. For selected bodies, we're going to select this, because we only want to split that one. We're going to cut it, and it gives us two. One, two, enter. Uh, nice. I'm going to hide this plane, because it bothers me. Just to keep it neat. And Get the center cap and the piece. Um, awesome. Now we're going to exit the isolate, and we're going to isolate just the cap. Um, now, center caps, the way they work, I'm sure you're aware they they go into the center piece. So there's a lot of different ways you can design center caps, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this face, I'm going to go normal to it, press N, um, press L for a line, I'm going to start a sketch. You can start a sketch right on the face. Make sure the face is selected when you press L that will ensure that it starts to sketch on that face. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this center point rectangle that we used earlier to design the solid. You click center rectangle, press the center, draw the rectangle. Um, click on both, shift, shift, press E for equal, it's not the square. You can even dimension this, you know 57 divided by 3 is 19, so this is 19 millimeters. Let's make this 17 millimeters to give us one millimeter on each side. So this is one millimeter, this is one millimeter. Um, let's, let's just make it, let's make it two millimeters, just for the heck of it. Um, <clears throat> doesn't really matter, so let's make it 15. Alright, and now just simply extrude this, like you would extrude anything else. So you press sketch 5, extrude boss base, only make it go like one millimeter though. Alright, let's make it go two, two is what we've been using. Let's make it go two millimeters, it doesn't really matter. So extrude that and hey look a center cap. Um, now X isolate. You're gonna come to this piece, press I for isolate. And now um, we need that to extrude what you know how I just extrude it out, we need this to go in. So what we do is we go down to here to boss extrude two, open it up, see sketch five, we're going to Click on Sketch 5, and instead of pressing Extrude Boss Base, we're going to cl click Extrude Cut. What that does is that extrudes into it. See, now it's going out the wrong way. We want it to extrude in. 
make sure it's two millimeters, and then it's blind here, the blind extrusion. Uh, then you press OK, check OK, and look at that. You just designed a little cavity for the center cap to go into. So if you look at this, this is the center cap. This is where it goes into. Just a little bit of creativity. Um, there you go. Um, now what we're going to do is design the screw. So I have what's called a caliper. A caliper is this little device. You can look it up. It's Mine is electronic. And it basically tells you distance. So it's like a measuring tool. Um, so I measure my screws. And you can use that basically to determine how big to make this hole. But what we're going to do is basically just go here and make the screw head. My screw head is about five millimeters. Um, so what I'm going to do is go click on this, press L. I'm going to draw a circle for my screw head because this is where the screw head will fit. I'm going to make this six millimeters because that's the diameter of my, my screw head is five, so I'll make it six just for a little extra room. I save that. That's my screw head there. Now what we want to do is we want to take sketch six and you want to extrude a cut. Uh, my screw is about a little less than a millimeter, sorry, a little more than a millimeter high, so I'll just make it two millimeters deep. Um, every M3 screw is different, but it's good to measure. So even with a ruler, you can measure it, see if it fits. Um, so that's where the screw head goes. Make sure there's plenty of room for that. Um, you can over over design this part. It's okay if there's extra room here. Um, now you want to do is click on this face and we're going to design the screw hole. So basically the hole that the end of the screw goes into. So I'm going to press L here. Um, go normal to that. Draw a circle. Um, now when we dimension the circle, keep note 3M means the screw size is 3 millimeters. So this hole should be a little bigger. Let's make this like uh, 3.2. That's what I use typically for 3M screws. 3.2. Or 3.1, 3.2. Basically, the screw is not really supposed to be held in by this because you know you want this to rotate about the screw. So you save that. Take sketch 7 and extrude that. Um, but we want this to go through the whole thing, so you can just increase it like that. Uh, let's make this 20. Doesn't really matter as long as it's through the whole thing. You save it, and you got a screw hole like that. So essentially, the center piece is done. Um, yeah, if you wanted to put a spring in, you could have extruded this a much farther, but we didn't. Don't really need screws or some springs. Um, you, unless, like, you're trying to make something turn fast, like you want to design a speed cube, which we're not doing. Alright, so, X isolate. So, this is done. Now, what we want to do is design the core, which is right here. Um, we want to design holes for, for the screws to screw into. So what we're going to do is I'm going to isolate this sphere. Going to the front plane. I'm going to press L. Draw a sketch on the front plane. All right. What I'm going to do is draw a circle here. And for 3M, I use 2.9 millimeter holes. 2.9. That usually fits snugly, so I say subtract about 0.1 millimeters from screw head size. Um, Take some playing around with it. I mean, you'll get used to it once you 3D print some things and you realize, oh, I like this more. It's all about personal preference. So, cool. you have sketch 8 here, which is the screw hole. You're going to click the sketch and you're going to go up to extrude cut because you want to extrude a hole. And you want to go mid plane, like because it's going through the whole sphere, and increase it up so that. It's going to extrude a cut all the way through that sphere. Press enter. Got a nice hole going through it. Um, but we need six of these. So, just like we had um, patterns before, you can we pattern the surface bodies. You can also pattern 
in circles um, other features like the cut. So we're going to take these axes, we're going to show them. Now I can see them, and what you want to do is take press O for circular pattern, and this time for features and faces. Um, what you want to do, sorry, first click your axis, let's just use like this axis, pattern four times, equal spacing, we're going to click down to your cut extrude, and you see what that did is it, make sure you check, made the pattern that cut. Awesome, now what you want to do, you need one more here, so we're going to press O again for circular pattern, pattern around a different axis, features and faces. You can actually pattern a pattern. So we're going to pattern circular pattern. And that gives us all of the holes for the screws. So we've got ourselves a core, and a center, and a center cap. And this is pretty much ready. Well, it needs some maintenance, which you'll see in the next videos, but this, these are all of the basic components. Um, later, in the next video, I'll show you how to maintain the pieces to make them printable, to make it turn well. Um, but yes, if you have questions, post them below. I will attend to them as fast as I can. Um, actually, I just realized this. If you have questions, definitely email me. The email is in the description. Um, I'm much more likely to find see those quickly, and I can respond to those a lot better. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. So. That's this video. Thank you for watching.